uh, an honor to God uh, who enables us to do all things. And welcome to you that come into us uh, on social media. And we give honor again uh, to our bishop designee, uh, my mom, Jeanette Williams White. We love her and we respect and, and honor her today and also to the elders and the ministers and all of the family of Zion. God bless you all and we love you. You know we love you. And those that are in uh, out in uh, Facebook land, we say welcome. Uh, and we welcome you all into the celebration of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, listen here, but, you know, because of uh, time constraint, we won't be long, but uh, we want to visit uh, what the Lord is saying to us in the word of God. So if you would turn your Bibles to uh, the, uh, the, the Gospel of John, uh, chapter number four, uh, one of the things that <clears throat> the Lord had been dealing with uh, us in prayer uh, was that there is anyone that has discernment in this time that we are living in, we can discern that there is confusion in the air. Uh, there are barriers uh, of racism uh, being plucked up and uh, being brought back up. Uh, these things have not died. Uh, the enemy is always at work. Uh, he's organized in his attacks. And so uh, if you can see and know and understand that in this time um, that many people are leaving or transitioning away uh, from the earth. And it is imperative that us that has the good news that we press to get the good news to those that are on the verge of leaving to make sure that they know who God is. Because when you leave here, uh, there is life after this life here. Um, spiritual life, whether it be with God or without God, damnation without God and life with God. So we want to make sure that everyone gets a chance to accept Jesus as their personal savior. So that means that our discernment has to be keen in this day and time, and that we must be in prayer and contact with God, that we let allow the will of God uh, that is done in heaven, let it be done on earth. So if you turn your Bibles uh, to John chapter number four, and we understand this author, John, who is known as the one that Jesus loved. Uh, John had an intimate relationship with Christ. And through his writing, he desires for you to know God, not just to know of him, but to know him intimately, to know him in spirit and in truth. So uh, let us go uh, read. And, and this is just a piece of the story, and then I'll catch you up because of time constraint. Uh, 424, John 424 reads this, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Let me read it again. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Come on, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask today that your Holy Spirit would reveal, that you open up the heavens of revelation, O oh God, that those that are confused, those that are blind, those that do not have an intimate relationship God, we ask right now that you open the windows of revelation now today, that they may come unto you. You said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw men unto me. God, we ask now that you send out the draw, that you throw out the fisherman's rod, that we may catch fish, that through this word, God, many may come to know you intimately not just knowing of you, but to know you personally. In Jesus' name, we pray. Can we say amen? Amen. <clears throat> and so when uh, I begin to, uh, we had this 
uh, in our studies in Bible class. And so as I was reading it, the Lord uh, continued to bring me to this. And this particular story uh, is one familiar with many about the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. Uh, the Samaritan woman at the well brings a significant case here because Jesus, his intentions is to break down some barriers that are set between uh, the Jewish uh, people and uh, the Samaritans. Uh, we know that from the time that sin entered the world in Genesis, mankind has been divided and hostile toward one another. From the murder of the brother, uh, his brother, from the murder of Abel at the hands of his brother Cain, a jealous brother, uh, he murdered his brother. And that is the first time that the earth tastes the blood of any humanity. And then we move to the dividing of the kingdom after God had brought Israel out of Egypt and into the United Kingdom of Israel under David, King Saul first, and then his obedience allowed God to chose David, who was God's chosen one from the beginning. But through the decisions of King, and disobedience, uh, there was a division in the kingdom. Until then, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And so when we look at the backdrop of this story, I need you to take on these readings because you'll understand uh, the distance. You'll understand uh, that there still uh, are barriers today that divide us socially, such as racism and sexism and social taboos and hate. And to understand this one, I need you to uh, take down these readings in 1 Kings 16, 23 and 24. 2 uh, Kings uh, chapter 7, uh, 24 and 41. I wanna take my time here so that you get what God is saying to us today. And there uh, you will find in those uh, stories that you will read, the Samaritans were despised by the Jews. And as in, uh, they were looked at as ancestral people, uh, a mixed culture, a mixed religion, uh, mixed worship, some of the things that we have going on today in our country, and not only in our country, but many places around the world. Here in this text, Jesus, who is the word made flesh, he is the truth and the life. He comes to break down the barriers uh, of not knowing God in spirit and in truth about Christ. Uh, it is not only good to know of Christ or to know about Christ, that is no substitute for knowing him intimately. He takes this unusual route on this journey with his disciples. Follow me now. Uh, Jesus is physically exhausted, and so he camps at the well. Uh, the well, Jacob's well, is known and represents a uh, common ground since both the Jews and the Samaritans revered Jacob. Uh, Jesus was alone. And he was not just alone for a certain purpose, uh, if you will. His disciples had went out to get groceries, if you will, uh, uh, food. And uh, uh, this, their absence uh, to me implies uh, that Jesus knew that he could not effectively minister to this woman in the presence of the racial and gender biases that his disciples had knew of. He comes to break down every mental and physical barrier of racism and gender bias, to tear down the misunderstanding of salvation, the truth that it would come through the lineage of Jews. And the woman of God, the woman of Samaritan said unto him uh, that salvation was coming and she was looking for that one. And Jesus makes known to her 
that the one that she's talking to, this is he. Now, this woman was shocked that Jesus would ask her for a drink. And since the Jews had no association with the Samaritans, Jesus told, uh, Jesus told her that if she understood who she was, who he was, she would have been asking him for a drink of living water, which is spiritual life. Uh, this water that Jesus presents uh, not is not just for the physical, this is for the spiritual life. I want you to understand, because many of us have known of God. We have been taught about God. Uh, we have studied about God, but don't have that intimate relationship with God. And to have life, everlasting life, you must drink from the master's cup. And he informs this woman that anyone that drinks from this natural well will thirst again. They will come for more water. But if you drink of the water that the Father gives to you, you shall never thirst again. And we have moved to a place uh, in this world where we see uh, that the, 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 the masses of people uh, are, are leaving the earth in numbers, in droves. And I, 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 I have been just, uh, uh, just blown away uh, by the movement and the, uh, those that are being sick. Uh, we have those uh, uh, just in my personal life. Uh, some of my friends uh, are stricken with diseases that, like cancer and diseases uh, that seem to be the end of the taking out of our loved ones. Uh, but I hear to tell you today that God is still a healer. He is still a uh, life and he gives life uh, and he gives life abundantly. We can never give up because of who God is. No matter what the preface is or one that has cancer, cancer is not the final answer to life. And no matter if you have coronavirus, coronavirus is not the finality of life. Uh, life is comes through Jesus Christ. And if God desires to heal, he will heal. I believe that in no matter the situation, I have faith that God will heal even when we don't think he can heal. Come on, somebody say God is a healer. Yes, uh, his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. Uh, and so uh, we have to tear down the barriers that we think in our mind. Uh, we have to tear down the things that we think that are not of God uh, and just listen to the Holy Spirit that it gives us a counsel on how to move. Now, this woman and uh, most of us know uh, in our studies that the Samaria or Samaritans were those that were stricken away from the Jewish people. And so here Jesus is at the well. And I wonder uh, where uh, your well is uh, uh, because there comes a day when you're going to be going on your way uh, to do something that you think that you need in the physical world or wherever you go. And there comes a place where you're going to meet Jesus at the well. I call it the well experience. That's where uh, God uh, uh, comes into the midst of your path and you meet him and he is acquiring of you. Now she can uh, resist him. Uh, she can turn away from him or she can embrace him. Here Jesus uses 
Genesis, something physical to tap in to something spiritual. Yes, he is fully man, but he is full spirit. He is the God man. He is man uh, with spirit without measure. He is God. He is the word wrapped in the flesh. And so uh, she doesn't recognize who he is. And by him uh, just knowing some of her history of her marriage, she declares that he is a prophet. But she is a little confused by where and how worship and salvation comes. First, she declares uh, that uh, the Jews worship uh, where they worship and the Samaritans where they worship. And maybe it was to throw Jesus off, but his focus is all always on the soul. No matter what people say to us to throw us off or to push us away, never lose focus on the soul. The witness of the soul, the witness going for the soul is mostly important. Now stay focused. Uh, she talks about where worship is, is and Jesus says, uh, now there comes a time and it is now now, when uh, uh, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth, not in a particular geographical area, not in a building or a tent. There comes a time, and it's, he's talking about his death and resurrection, because when God death takes place and the resurrection, now the Holy Spirit, wherever it is, there's an altar. You don't have to go into a certain sacred place uh, uh, to worship God in spirit and in truth. You don't have to be in a certain city to worship God in spirit and in truth. All you have to do is know him in spirit and in truth. Uh, in spirit and in truth. Well, what does that mean, Pastor Mark? Well, in, in spirit means uh, that you have to know God because he is a spirit. Your spirit has to be willfully chasing and open to him as he is God and he is a spirit. You cannot worship God with your mind. You cannot just throw your hands in, up and think that it is good and clear in the spirit. No, no, your heart must be belong to God. Your heart must be given to God. And then when you drink of uh, the well of Zion, uh, the well that comes from Emmanuel's vein, then you'll never thirst again. This woman was in seeking out. Uh, she was uh, coming uh, uh, in secrecy out to a well because most people don't come to the well around that time. But you can tell that there was shame there. You can tell that there, uh, she didn't want anybody to know who she was and what she had done. But here Jesus knew that this was a time to break down barriers. It was a time that we would now deal uh, with the social and ancestry uh, of the people of Samaria. She says that one would come to clear up things, but Jesus cleared it up now. He said that, first of all, salvation is of the Jews. <laughs> Which means that he would come through the line or the lineage of the Jewish nation. And because they were still his brothers and sisters, even though they were intertwined uh, with different people and foreigners and mixed religion and mixed worship, Jesus was now tearing down the barrier. And now he says that my mission I 
come as that one that you're talking about. The one uh, that you would get to know, not in the physical state of a temple, but that you would become the temple of the living God. What God needs from us is a willing heart, a willing heart to receive him as our spirit of the living God. It becomes a time when we have to let go of our own will and brace on to his will. Somebody put your hands together and give God some praise. Many people are leaving this earth not knowing who God is, uh, not knowing him intimately or spiritually. Uh, this woman, uh, she knew of God. She had been told of God, but she did not know him personally. But today is the day, uh, the time and the hour for her to get to know him intimately. Some of you, God has been turning, uh, turning off your TVs. He's been interrupting your lives and your programs to introduce himself to you. Not as to know of him, but to know him intimately, to chase after him with your heart and your soul, always looking for the spiritual insight of things. Notice uh, we're under a lot of pressure in this country. Uh, prices going up, uh, gas is high, uh, the shelves in the stores are empty. But that doesn't affect you as a child of God. God will always seek after his own. God will always remember the needs of his people. Even in the times of tribulation, even in the times of famine and hunger, God has always made a way for his people. And today is no different. But he is seeking for those that would worship him in spirit and in truth. God is seeking for people that is thirsty for righteousness. He's seeking for those that would turn down their plate and pray for those that are sick. Pray for the elderly and help those that are alone and stuck on the roads. Those under bridges without food. God God will take care of his own. All you have to do is get to know him personally. I know it is some people that's been in the church houses for years and they know of God and they know about God, always read about him, but have no personal relationship with God. Well, today, God is calling us into a, a personal relationship with him, an intimate relation with him. I love the word intimate, into him. Get into him, get into him. How do you find him? It's through spirit and in truth. Your heart has to be open to receive him in. And when you receive him in, uh, he'll give you the wells that will spring up, up out of you that life, uh, you'll speak it to others. Notice that this woman, I'm almost finished, uh, this woman, by uh, her encountering Jesus and him breaking down the barriers between uh, her and the Jews and the Samaritans and the Jews, he breaks down the barriers, uh, the social taboos, the things uh, that they were forbidden to do. Here Jesus comes. Uh, and now he gives her this water of life. She receives it because this woman is looking for redemption. She's looking for the forgiveness of sin. I don't know about you, but one day I was in that place where I was looking for forgiveness. I was crying to be received. I wanted God to take the shame away from all of the things that I did. And one day I was going and had a well experience.
experience when Jesus walked into my life and I couldn't go around him, couldn't go over him or under him. All I knew is I had to respond to him. And I gave my life and my heart to him because I was looking for it. And through that, I'll never turn back. I'll never look back. I know that in times, the enemy try to bring your past and set it before you. But when you're in God, when you're in spirit and in truth, the intimacy and the relationship with God, every foul imagination, you'll cast it down. Everything that get in your way, you rebuke demons and death. Uh, because why? Because life, uh, life is springing up out of you. And the Holy Spirit counsels us uh, that we would go and witness to those that are not like us. Uh, how dare we say that that one is not worthy? Uh, how dare we say uh, what is salvation and what deserves salvation? Uh, people People don't have to smell a certain way to get salvation. They don't have to have a look uh, a way to get salvation. They just have to have a willing heart. And that's why Jesus says that the harvest is plentiful. Yeah, if you look where what's going on in this world, the harvest is plentiful, but it's not many willing to do the labor. God is calling us forth now in this time of intimacy in him that we break down the barriers of racism, break down down the barriers of religion and take the opportunity, even if they don't believe. Tell them Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And if you're going to get to God or make it to heaven, you can't go without him. You can't go with sin. You can't go with fault. You can't go with unforgiveness. You got to pull all that mess off because God is a spirit. And he that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. What is the truth? Truth. Jesus said, I am the truth and the life. Ain't no other truth but God. Anybody that bring you any other truth, it's a lie from the pit of hell. Anybody that tells you there's another way to get to heaven, it's a lie from the pit of hell. It's only one way, and he is the way, the truth and the life. Uh, I'm going to preach this gospel uh, until I die. I won't turn back uh, to my vomit. Uh, I know that the enemy wants you. Uh, and then God, Jesus told Peter uh, at once, he said, Satan desires to sift you. Uh, I tell you today, uh, people of God, uh, even though the enemy is pursuing, uh, don't let him sift you away. Uh, stay in prayer. Uh, continue to, to, to go to Bible class. Uh, don't miss class. Uh, don't miss prayer. Uh, don't hide because you mess up. Uh, come on and get up and ask God to forgive you. Open your heart. Uh, and then when he saves you, go testify like the woman uh, in Samaria. She gave her testimony. You got a testimony if you saved. How dare you sit on that testimony? If God freed you from drugs, how dare you sit on the testimony of deliverance? If God brought you out of bad relationship, how dare you sit on your testimony? This woman took the testimony. She didn't go to Bible class. She didn't have theological training. Uh, uh, she just knew that uh, what she had encountered was an intimacy with God. And now her Savior, uh, when he's in you, you can testify. And what she did was go back 
uh, and the whales begin to spring up out of her. The whale of the gospel uh, that Jesus came uh, to save all. Uh, I don't care where you're at or who you are. Uh, I don't care what you have done, Jesus came to save you and he came to give you life and life abundance cancer can't stop you coronavirus can't stop you ain't no disease on this earth can stop you when you're in Christ because the life that's in you will spring up like well well uh, go back now. Uh, if you come out of the streets, uh, go back to the street corners uh, and declare that Jesus is saved. Uh, if you come out of the bars uh, drinking late night, uh, don't go back into them, let God tell you. Uh, but uh, you should preach to those that go in them uh, and declare to them that God is a savior. Uh, if he bought you out of horror, mongering, uh, uh, all types of immorality. Uh, go back and continue uh, to testify about the deliverance of God. Listen, there ain't no secret set, uh, testimonies. Uh, uh, we rebuke all the secrets. No. Uh, uh, secret societies and all of that. No. In God, there is no secrecy. Uh, uh, he is transparent. Uh, the gospel uh, yeah, oh my God, it came to save, and it's still saving today. So don't you set on your deliverance. Don't you set on your testimony. Uh, when you're in God, let that well, let it come up out of you. Give your testimony. Witness to those that are lost. Don't let the enemy tell you who to talk to, who to witness to, who deserves this. My God, God is a mighty God. And today we're telling you what the spirit of the Lord is saying. God de desires to have an intimate relationship. There are people that are leaving here. It's time to stop playing. It's time to come in. This half and half, no, no. God is calling for us to come in fully. I know that there's so much going on in the atmosphere. Turn the TV off. It's okay. Yeah, we already know what's happening. I'm not saying st to stick your head in the sand like ostriches. But what I'm saying is, we have to get intimate with God. In that intimate time, God will show us where to deposit the gospel. He will show us where the dry land is. But saints of God, people of God, those that are seeking, God is pursuing. He's pursuing those that would worship him in spirit and in truth. He's on a pursuit for the open heart. And we, saints of God, we have an obligation to take the message. No matter what the barrier is, no matter what it is, I know sometimes people uh, up under the bridge, uh, we may not look at them as those that are that may smell, smell like us, look like us. No, no. Those are God's souls. I know that people may be in high offices and, and may be great in different places, but it don't stop them from hearing the gospel. We have to tear down every barrier that has been set up by the enemy and division that we become one. God designs desires a united body. And we today have to get intimate with him in spirit and in truth, saints of God. We can no longer 
have one foot in and one foot out. God desires an intimate relationship with us. And if you desire to have that relationship with him right now, if you are tired of running, tired of hiding, tired of being ashamed, today is your day. Today, if you will open up your heart, Jesus will come in. And you will drink from the well that you will never thirst. Come on, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your word. Father, we ask that you would minister to the heart of one that is seeking. One, oh God, that is confused. One that is ready to give up. One that has a sickness, an illness that seems like they won't make it. But God, you are God. You are the creator of all things. And there's nothing impossible, nothing impossible with you. So God, we ask that you intervene now, that you open the hearts and reveal to those hearts that are open unto you, that will say, yes, Lord. We say, yes, Lord, and we open our hearts and our minds to you. God, save them now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah.